morning, good morning. Welcome to the International Gathering at Beth Rafa, where the Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough is our senior pastor and general overseer. Yes, we do appreciate the uh, bishop, that the, the, the leader that the Lord has given us. We thank you this morning for tuning in, those of you on social media platforms and live stream, and we thank God for those in the Zoom room. Yes, yes. Thought it not robbery give, to give God praise on this, the Lord's day. We're going to begin our service at this time, and we're, the men are going to cover us in a word of prayer. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm just going to ask if all the men at this time can stretch forth their hands toward their electronic devices. All the men, you don't have to stand up, but do stretch forth your hands toward the uh, your electronic devices as we go before the throne of grace together to corporately cover the house in prayer. Amen. Let us begin. Father, we come before you now to give you thanks, to give you praise, to give you glory, Lord, to give you honor, to lift you up, to exalt you, Lord, to magnify your holy name, for truly you are worthy of the praise. From the rising up of the sun to the going down of the same, Father God, thou name art worthy to be praised. We rejoice in that this morning in Jesus' name. Father God, we as men, we stretch forth our hands to cover this house. We ask for your supernatural empowerment, a double anointing, Father God, to cover this house. We, Satan, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. We command you to stand down and we rebuke all your schemes, traps, and apparatuses that you would seek to launch against our electronic devices and our airwaves. Father, we commit this service into your hands. We need power this morning. We need power to praise you, power to worship you, power to do things rightly this morning in Jesus' name. Anoint our worship, Father God. Let it be as a sweet smelling incense into your nostrils. Lord God, anoint the giving this morning. May we give with a cheerful, happy, blessed heart and not grudgingly this morning. Anoint the preachment, Father God. Anoint our leader to bring forth the word of God with power, with might, wisdom, and understanding that souls may be saved, healed, delivered, and set free this morning. And Father God, we just, we just love you this morning. Grant us more power, more power than normal, that we could praise you and worship you with all of our heart, with all of our souls, with all our minds, and with all our strengths this morning. Holy Spirit, come now and orchestrate these things as such, we pray. In Jesus' holy name, we thank you and welcome you. Amen. Praise him. Praise him in joyful song. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, our blessed redeemer. Sing, oh, earth is wonderful love proclaimed. Wonderful, wonderful. 
of thy only begotten son didst reveal his glory upon the holy mount grant unto us that we beholding by faith the light of his countenance may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I will read in your hearing the Old Testament scripture for instruction coming from Psalm 99. Again, that is Psalm 99. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me as I read in your hearing the Old Testament reading or scripture for instruction. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. The king's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost ex establish equity. Thou executedst judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answerest them, O Lord our God. Thou wast a God that forgavest them, though thou took it. Thou answered them, O Lord our God. Thou wast a God that forgavest them and though thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. So far the scripture, please stand as we read our New Testament scripture for admonition, coming from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. We will read responsibly. I will read the first verse. 
You will read the second, and we will conclude at verse 9 together. Again, that is our New Testament scripture for admonition coming from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in, him, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Together. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. So far, the scripture, please remain standing. Please let it, please keep your devices on mute as we recite the Nicene Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and crucified also for us on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again according to the scripture and ascended in heaven, into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, and spake by the peep, by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, and acknowledge the baptism for the remission of sin. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When we say one Catholic and apostolic, we are not only referring to the Roman Catholic, but the church universal. By one baptism for the remission of sins, we mean the baptism of the Holy Ghost. For more information of the creed, please refer to our website, BethRapha.org under the heading, why we do the things we do. Song says, in his presence, in his presence there is peace. In his presence, in his presence there is joy. Lord, here we linger, here we stay in your presence day by day until what? Your likeness can be seen in each of us this morning. Come on, let's lift your voices in the sanctuary and sing. In his presence, 
the glory, hallelujah, the glory in all things, give him glory, oh Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be, tell him again, we've come to give you the glory. Father, we come before you now, Lord God, to give unto the thanks, to give unto the praise, Lord, to give unto the glory, to give unto the honor. Lord, we worship you this morning. We magnify your name, Lord God. We lift you up, Lord God. We continue to exalt you, blessed Savior, for you are our Lord. You are our God. You are our healer. You are the rock of our salvation. And we take joy in that this morning, knowing that our God is our I am that I am. You are our everything this morning. And we thank you for that. Lord God, we lift up our bishop before your Holy Spirit, Father God. We pray Psalm 91, Father God, in Jesus' name. We pray for her holy protection. And in Jesus' name, that you would cover her from the noise of pestilence that fly by day and by night, Father God, in Jesus' name. 
Lord, magnify you, Lord God. We lift you up. We exalt you for you alone are worthy of the praise. Lord God, we pray for Ephesians 1.18, Colossians 1.9, that you would fill her with the spirit of your will. Give her a spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation, that she would know the hope of your glorious calling, Father God, and give her a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of understanding, and, and, and also a sons of Issachar anointing, that she, as our leader, would know what to do concerning the times that we are now living in. We thank you for her, Father God. Continue to cover her in this way. Lord God, we lift up Joe Biden before your throne. We ask and pray, Father God, that you would put the fear of God inside this man, that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would not be a hindrance to your end time plan, Father God, but that he would work in congruence. I pray that he would listen and adhere, Father God, to the teachers that you sent him, to the preachers that you send him, that the prophets that speak the word of the Lord, he will adhere to and work with you and not against you in this end time hour. Lord, we lift up the leadership before your throne. We ask and pray that it's Moses and Aaron and, and Joshua were in the wilderness so that you would give us as leaders the knowledge to know when to hold up the bishop's hand, how to hold up the bishop's hand, even the power, the anointing, the might to hold up her hands. Father God, anoint us as leaders in this way, and we will also be a, 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 an, an asset to her and not a hindrance to her in Jesus' name. Lord, we also lift up the land. You told us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that we should Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to thine own understanding. But in all our ways, we should acknowledge you and you would direct our paths. As we continue, Father God, to trust in you, we pray that you would lead us directly to the land that you have ordained for us to have praise and worship in. A nice, gracious, spacious place where we can rejoice and praise and worship you. Help us to be patient until that time comes in Jesus' name. Lord, we also lift up the souls that you have ordained to be in this house. Lord, you said, Father God, as the Son of Man is lifted up, I shall draw all men unto him. So we pray as we continue to preach and teach and sing and worship Jesus, Father God, that you, Holy Spirit, would go out throughout the land and draw in those souls that have been ordained to come to this house to be saved to be healed to be set free to be delivered to be taught to be trained to be raised up to be disciples just as the lord jesus christ and his disciples were and father god in jesus name we lift up the sick and those that are grieving before you father god too numerous to mention but we thank we thank god that you are god and that you know who each and every one of them are and what their ailments are we speak to these rebellious cells and all these bodies that are that are afflicted and we command them in the name of the lord jesus christ to be, leave these bodies in jesus name we pray for good cells healthy cells white cells we pray for strong immunity systems this morning in jesus name build up their immunity systems father god that their bodies would be able to function as you have ordained Ordain them to. We thank God for our bodies and how you've created them to be. Help those that are not functioning properly this morning to function rightly. Lord, we commit this service into your hands. We ask and pray that you would be with us as we seek to praise you, as we seek to worship you, as we seek to magnify your holy name. Empower us now as such, we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Welcome to Beth Rafa. There are times in our waiting on God that we may feel as if we are imprisoned. Yes, the wait may constrict our movements, limit our activities, silence our communication, and redefine our socialization. This may bring great discomfort, distress, and depression for many. The only way to break out of this perceived imprisonment is to accept God's word, believe his promise, and trust his timing. When we do that, we will pray differently, sing frequently, and serve joyfully. We are not serving time, but living life. On behalf of our senior pastor, Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough, welcome to Beth Rafa, where you can experience healing to heal by loving Christ. All I want. Bienvenido a Beth Rafa. Hay momentos en nuestra espera en Dios que podemos sentirnos como si estuviéramos encarcelados. Es cierto que la espera puede contraer nuestros movimientos, limitar nuestras actividades, silenciar nuestra comunicación y redefinir nuestra asociación. Esto puede traer gran molestia, angustia y depresión para muchos. 
La única forma de salir de este encarcelamiento percibido es aceptando la palabra de Dios, creyendo en su promesa y confiar en su tiempo. Cuando hagamos eso, oraremos diferente, cantaremos con más frecuencia y serviremos con alegría. No estamos cumpliendo una condena, sino viviendo la vida. De parte de nuestra pastora y obispo Jacqueline McCullough, bienvenido a Beth Rafa, donde usted puede experimentar sanidad para sanar amor a Cristo. Bienvenue à Beth Rafa. Il y a des moments dans notre attente de Dieu où nous pouvons avoir l'impression d'être emprisonnés. Oui, l'attente peut restreindre nos déplacements, limiter nos activités, faire taire notre communication et redéfinir notre socialisation. Cela peut entraîner un grand inconfort, de la détresse et de la dépression pour beaucoup. La seule façon de sortir de cet emprisonnement perçu est d'accepter la parole de Dieu. Croyez en sa promesse et faites confiance à son calendrier. Lorsque nous ferons cela, nous prierons différemment, chantez fréquemment et servez joyeusement. Nous ne purgeons pas de temps, mais vivons la vie. Au nom de notre pasteur titulaire, l'évêque Jacqueline E. Macolan, bienvenue à Bedrafa, où vous pouvez expérimenter la guérison pour guérir en aimant le Christ. Great news, Beth Rafa has two new ways for you to sow into the ministry, Zelle and Alexio TextPay. The email to use for Zelle is jed at bethrafa.org. Put in the notes section where to designate the funds, i.e. tithes, general offering, building fund, building fund land, or word alive. Funds go directly into the church's account and a receipt will be sent to jed at bethrafa.org of all contributions. For more information on how to use Alexio TextPay, visit BethRafa.org for step-by-step -step instructions.
And we welcome you to our Barnabas Ministry Discipleship classes live on Zoom every Wednesday from 7 to 7.45 p.m. Join us for the month of March as we look at and learn about the character of Joseph. If you would like to connect with us, visit our website, bethrafa.org. Click on the Ministries tab, then on Barnabas. Scroll down and click on Barnabas Ministry Zoom Sessions. If you would like to view a previous class, visit our YouTube page and type in Barnabas Class. And check out our Barnabas Ministry group on Facebook. Questions? Email us at barnabas at bethrafa.org. We would love to hear from you. If you would like to attend our 7.30 a.m. service, you will need to register online at bit.ly forward slash brregister. Registration opens each week on Wednesday at 10 p.m. and closes at midnight on Saturday. Please note, there are a limited number of seats and you must agree to the COVID-19 protocols as explained during the registration process. When registering, you must account for the total number of people in your party, including children that will occupy a seat. We look forward to seeing you. Please join us for our next fellowship service at First Timothy Christian Church, Sunday, March 26th at 6 p.m. The church is located at 198 North Main Street, Spring Valley, New York, 10977. Please note, you do not have to register. However, mask and temperature checks are required. We will use the fellowship link. The password is fellowship. We look forward to seeing you there. And please mark your calendars for our 2023 Passion Week services, commencing on Palm Sunday evening at 6.30 p.m. through Good Friday. The theme for this year is an established kingdom. We will also be in a time of prayer and fasting, Monday, April 3rd through Friday, April the 7th. We will eat one meal, breaking the fast at 3 p.m. each day. Services Monday through Friday will begin at 8 p.m. Prayer will begin at 7 p.m. We will use the fellowship link. The password is fellowship. Speakers for the week are as follows. Sunday evening, April 2nd at 6.30 p.m., Pastor Brian McKenzie Sr. in Established Kingship. On Monday, April 3rd, Pastor Nadine McKenzie in Established Priesthood. On Tuesday, April 4th, Pastor Pat Bean and Established Authority. On Wednesday, April 5th, Pastor Angel Hush, Established Prophecies. On Thursday, April 6th, Pastor Diane Singho, and Established Promise. Note, there will be Holy Communion. And on Friday, April 7th, Good Friday, Seven Last Sayings from the Cross. Save the date. Our Mother's Day celebration is fast approaching. The theme this year will be Daughters of Divine Inheritance, taken from Numbers chapter 27, verses 1 through 11. Plan to join us on Saturday, May 6th, 2023 from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Remember, this will be a virtual event to benefit the Destiny Academy in Monrovia, Liberia. Details to come, so be on the lookout. These have been your announcements. Any additional announcements will come from our bishop. And put your hands together. It's offering time in the sanctuary. Grace and peace, good morning. I do have the privilege and the honor to bring you the tithe and offering exhortation for the month of March, and it will continue with our theme, Financial Watch. Last week we did faith versus fate, and today we'll do faith to see. Let's go to the scripture. Here begins the reading of God's holy word, Matthew chapter 25, verses 8 to 9, and I'll be reading out of the Amplified. But the foolish virgins said to the wise, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. Verse 9. But the wise replied, no, otherwise there will not be enough for us and for you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy oil for yourselves. Now the scriptures admonish us to never argue with a fool on their own terms using what we call a paradox. Now, why were the virgins foolish? 
they knew that they needed lamps with light to prepare the way for the bridegroom that was coming because they did not have a switch to turn on the electricity. So now, Proverbs 26, verses 4 to 5 reads, here begins the reading of God's holy word. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like him, like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So far the scripture. The response of the wise virgins to the foolish virgins was to challenge them using the light of reason so that they could see. Since they freely chose not to prepare, the wise instructed them to go to the dealers and buy their own oil for themselves. Now, the scripture says that the lamps were going out, which means that it was near dark or dark. So they had to fumble in the dark to go to the dealers to buy their own oil because they chose not to prepare. The scripture doesn't say anything about how they feel, but I am convinced that those foolish virgins felt angry and they grumbled at themselves while they fumbled in the dark. Now, what is a paradox? A paradox is a seemingly absurd, contradictory statement or proposition that when you investigate it, you will prove it to be well-founded or true. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Our holy scriptures are full of paradoxes. Now, here are a couple for your consideration. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26 for what profited a man for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul so far the scripture it's a paradox now let's look at the redox reaction now combustion which is what the oil and the lamps used to produce a flame now combustion is a scientific process for producing a flame for one to see the virgins needed the flame from their oil lamps to see the bridegroom to see the beauty of the blessing of the marriage feast for the lamp the oil had to give up something it had to donate electrons on that substance which another substance will take on freely the oil gives up and something else takes now this is what science refers to as reduction and oxidation and it is a process of combustion because the oil has a giving capacity it is essentially reduced oh gosh can somebody say reduce this morning science calls the oil a reducer okay see la moment does my heart freely donate am i ready to be reduced Matthew 23 verses 11 to 12 says here begins God's word but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that humble himself shall be exalted so far the scripture now a few interesting things that I want you to consider the spark the oil and the flame now the free giving up and receiving of electrons the redox process occurs simultaneously meaning one cannot happen without the other number two before we can have a flame to see we need to activate it the oil needs a spark number three the flame is produced is way more than the spark that it needed to produce, to be produced. Okay, okay. All right, so the spark, the oil, and the flame. Let's connect the dots to tithe and offering. Your tithe, 
your offering, your over and above giving to the kingdom of God is the spark that initiates and activates the flame of blessings the Lord has prepared for you. Blessings such as your health, your peace, your economic provision, and the favor. The gift keeps on giving to generation and generation and generation. What kind of blessing are you hoping to see? What do you need to spark to get your blessing? Well, Proverbs 11 and 24 paradox reads, Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything so far the scripture okay so let's summarize this morning with the faith flame prescription for you to see here begins God's word Matthew chapter 9 verse 28 to 30 and when he was come into the house the blind man came to him and Jesus saith unto them believe ye that I am able to do this they said unto him yeah Lord then touched he their eyes saying according to your faith be it unto you and their eyes were open so far the scripture ladies and gentlemen what are you sparking in your oil that you're supposed to bring to see the blessing of God so far <laughs> I hand it over to our bishop I think we ought to put our hands together and thank God for that challenge this morning. Amen. And I hope you connected the points. Amen. It's very clear. This is not happening by osmosis. It's not happening because you come in a building or you're on Zoom or you're religious. This is practice. You have to do. We can't be just hearers of the word and not doers of the word. Amen? We need to prepare. Now, if you're li listening or watching the news, I think this is a very appropriate time to listen. Banks are what? Are closing. People have money and can't get the money. We don't know where this is going to lead. This is not the first time. It happened in Greece, it happened in Canada. It has happened before. 2008, it was just a precursor to where we are. So we now have to go to kingdom economics. And that's what she taught this morning. Kingdom economics. Which means that don't panic, prepare. Amen? So what are you laying? We have so much confidence in so many schemes and plans and all of that. We need to do what God says. If we put him first, if we prepare, his oil. My mother used to sing, a little more oil in your lamp, what? Keep it burning. Keep the flame of the Holy Ghost. Keep the spirit of instruction in your own personal finances you know what I'm saying spend God's money wisely ask God to open up doors for you to come out of debt and you he will give you the ability to prepare for the next generation many of us are sad because we feel like we have nothing to offer I'm, I'm, I'm digging this mural it is just wonderful this morning what you taught us how to prepare Pair. You know, one, one of the things is that people, Christians die, and they're not able to leave their family, you know, um, adequate enough inheritance for them to live. Many of us in here, we didn't have a rich uncle that died. Now, I had probably rich family members, but, you know, they didn't leave me nothing. But God is leaving us principles today that if we practice them, we'll be able to pass them on to our children and our children's children. And in the midst of a famine, 
Isaac reaped a hundredfold. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on and praise the Lord. I hope, I tell your neighbor, get wise, get wise. They used to say in, in the 70s and 80s, wise up, wise up. Let's get wise this morning. Lord, we thank you for this powerful, powerful exhortation. It's not only biblical, it's scientific, it's practical, it's economic. It's one package to teach us that no matter what's happening in the world, in society, if we just follow you, we'll be able to endure. We'll be able to prepare. We'll be able to be sustained. Glory to God. Sustain us, Lord. You're a God of providence. You didn't just drop us here and leave us. You're intimately involved. So I'm asking you, Lord, to help us not have wild dreams. Help us not to think that this world is a secured place. The only security we have is when we practice your word and your principles, even in giving. So as we give this morning, help us to give with these words in mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior. God my Savior. My healer. God my healer. Deliverer, God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, God my Savior. My healer. God, my healer. My deliverer. God, God my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, 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 every praise is to our God. Amen, amen. Every praise has a direction for the Christian. We are praising him for who he is. Amen. So when we say hallelujah, when we say glory, we're saying it to our God. Amen. And there's certain things that we say to our God that we say to none other. Amen. You're creator. You're awesome. You're infinite. You're eternal. You're true. You're righteous. You're holy. There's none like you. You're the author. You're the finisher. Amen. You're the beginning and you're the end. All of that, what? All of that belongs to what? Our God. Amen. Welcome to the International Gathering of Beth Rapha. This is the Lord's Day. And the Lord's Day meaning that we come to worship him on this day. We worship him all week. But on Sunday, we worship him with one main thing in mind. It's pronounced. is that he rose on this day. That this day, he got up out of the grave. And he conquered sin. And my freedom, I was released to be a legitimate child of God. Amen. My sins are forgiven. 
And the Lord has given me a new way of life, a new way of walking, a new way of talking. He's given me hope. He's given me assurance. He gives me help and guidance. So this day, when I say hallelujah, it's with a certain kind of understanding that he is alive and that he got up, but he didn't get up and forget me. He got up and he's still interceding, still advocating, still pleading, still watching over me. Oh, come on, put your hands together for the Lord's day. The Lord's day, the Lord's day, the Lord's day, the Lord's day. Thank you so much to those of you who are out there on social media and many of you out there are members of this church. I salute you this morning. Many of you are in the Zoom. I salute you as well. And many of you, I can say many of you, are in the sanctuary at 1540. And I salute you as well. I salute you equally as well. Amen. Because all of you belong to the family of God. Whether you're a member of this church or any other church, if you belong to the Lord, you are my sister or my brother. And I greet you in the name of Jesus. And if you don't know the Lord, I salute you too. Because I want you to get to know him. He's a wonderful savior. Amen. There's so many wonderful things about Jesus. So many wonderful things about him. Amen. Glory to God. He's my counselor. He's my redeemer. He's my helper. So we thank God. So my job is to bring you the word. But before I do, we do have a sermonic soloist in the person of Reverend Karastine Scott. And we're going to ask her to come and minister to you what's on her heart. And prepare your heart for the word. God bless you. Remembering so well the day that I met you. Lord, you took me in your arms and caused dreams to come true from the fear of what would be. You came and rescued me, Lord, I pray today and for the rest of my life, live inside my heart. Please stay for always till the timeless place when we're face to face and we embrace for always. Oh, yeah. and see the hills that I must climb. Some high and some low, but if you lead, I'll go. And at the end, I'll see you are always there. And we're face to face, and we embrace for always. Lord, I pray today and for the rest of my life, live inside my Always till the 
Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Karistine. We're not just here with him for time alone, but for what? Eternity, amen. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not just for time alone, but for what? Eternity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. On this glorious day, let's turn our Bibles to the 27th Psalm, and I'll be reading verses 11 through 14, but the sermon will be coming from verse 13. That's Psalm 27, verses 11 through 14, but I will be parking at verse 13 just for a minute. Again, Psalm 27, starting at verse 11 and ending at verse 14. I am reading from the King James Version, but you may have another version. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So far, the reading of the hear of God's word. Thank you so much for joining. Amen. And the title of this message is, I was caused to believe. I was caused to believe. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but hopefully it will. I was caused to believe. I love the book of Psalms for many, many reasons because it takes me into a devotional life. The whole Bible does, but somehow the Psalms is that quick book that you can go to and just be led immediately into a certain worshipful attitude. It is a collection of, of poems, Hebrew poems put to music, Book of Praises it's called, and we have about six authors that we know of. David probably wrote 73, Solomon, Ethan, Sons of Korah, Asaph, Moses, and as I said, many anonymous writers put together what we call the hymn book of the Bible. This is a powerful book which really convey feelings that's common to all of us in all ages. There is no age where people have not felt fearful, anxious, lonely, in despair, or joyful. These are common feelings to common people at every time, every age in the world. The book, the Hebrew poetry, this particular book, Song of Praises, these songs are designed to express very strong feelings. Now, I love that because most people, you know, in, or many people, or maybe some people, or maybe a few people, believe that when you are in church or when you engage in worship, that you shouldn't have any strong feelings. And especially in the charismatic circle, where you're allowed to express your feelings within reason. Let me just say within reason. It's just because you're charismatic, it doesn't mean you're crazy. But you are allowed the freedom to express strong feelings. That's what some of the commentators and the people who attended the Ashbury revival recently, they were saying people were allowed to express express their feelings, they cried, they prayed, they sang, they knelt, they waved, they moved around. It was a kind of charismatic um, 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 experience. Well, you know, for the black church, the black charismatic church, we do a lot of that. You know, we do a lot of expressions. Well, the Psalms allow us to do so. The whole Bible 
allows us to do so. But the Psalms especially, it causes us to explore human feelings in our worship. Okay? We can go from depression to exorcism, to being elated. Okay? We can go from anger and wanting to be vindictive or being vengeful to a spirit of humility and forgiveness right there in the psalm. We can go to God for pleading for protection. And then at the other end, we're rejoicing because we got deliverance. So the psalm can take you, it takes you from one gamut to the other. This is why you shouldn't hold back your feelings and your expressions when you're worshiping. If you want to cry, you should cry. If you're, if you're angry, you should talk to the Lord and tell him you're angry. The Psalms allow you to do that. But what is it about this particular Psalm? And it's really, you know, it's up in the air when it comes to scholars, whatever. But they agree this is a Davidic Psalm. That means it's about David. It's about David. And it's about some portion of David's life. As a matter of fact, it's mainly about most of his life because he was always engaged in conflict. He was engaged in war. He was a general. He was a, he was a warrior. But he was chased by Saul, chased by Absalom, lived in caves. He had to fight against the Hittites, this ite. He was always in some kind of uh, battle. He was in some kind of war zone. He knew the trauma of war. He knew what it was to live in the midst of a hostile environment. He knew what it was for someone to pursue him and want to get rid of him for no reason at all except that he was chosen. So, you know, when the Lord chooses you, you can, you can be hated. Haven't done anything wrong but hated. And then he was, he was constantly, constantly attacked. And he's, you know, he's running. He's a fugitive. He's living here. He's living there. At one time, he had no place to live, but in a little temporary situation. And when he got in the situation and he was outside of the camp, came back and found all of his children and his wives and the, the other men's wives were stolen as captive. There was always some kind of combative situation, traumatic situation, like somebody's experiencing right now. Don't raise your hand. Hmm. I can raise hands and feet. There's always the horror, the cruelty, the savagery, the evilness of men's hearts. And so David can be battle-worn. <laughs> Anybody in here battle-worn this morning? You just, you're just tired of the conflict. Every time you turn around, it's something. Every time you look, something is coming at you. Every time you get in a certain place and you think there's a little peace, here comes something popping up its ugly head. When you thought it was buried, here it comes again. And David, David is living in a time where fear can grip him. Discouragement can grip him. So this particular uh, psalm is talking about the courage of faith and, and, and the communion with God and how he had to desire God and go after God and hope in God and then how he had to hold on to that belief. So the first point, the first point is the belief factor. And it says, I had fainted unless I had believed. Now, the phrase I had fainted is not in the original text, and we're not going to include it. The writers sometimes put phrases in. Now, it's not, it's not heretical. It's not that it wasn't possible for David to feel this way. But because it's not in the original, we're going to leave the text as it is, because as it is, it's too good. <laughs> it doesn't need any help this morning. So we're going to leave out, I had fainted. And so here we have, we're going to start with, unless I had believed. Now, it, it sounds like, you know, it's, it's not complete. You know, when you read, unless I had believed, without I had fainted, it just doesn't make sense. But you're talking about a man that's emotional, and he's talking in a certain way. 
So it's not going to make sense. Just like when you get emotional and you're trying to get something out, it doesn't always come out. So you got to you got to look at it a little bit deeply. You have to look at the words. You have to look at the tense of the verb. You have to look at the mood to really get it. You understand? So what it what it, what it, the unless means? If it had not been, you understand? Because of my belief. Due to my belief, on account of, on account of my belief. All right? Now, 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 what is, what is, what is belief here? Belief means what he, what is built up on. What is supporting him. What is fostering him. What is nursing him. It's, it's really a foundation. If it had not been for my foundation, something firm was holding me. You see, you can have a roof, you can have windows, but if you have no foundation, you don't have anything. He said, if it had not been for what was holding me up, something was holding me up. Now, now the, 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 the word belief here is a verb, of course, um, and it's in a certain form. You know, and when it's broken down, or broke, you know, it's conjugation is different patterns of the verb. So this verb is in a certain pattern. And the pattern, you know, talks about the tense, the gender, okay, the number or person, the voice, whether it's active, passive, or middle. So what this, 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 if you're going to take out, I had fainted. You've got to now shift the emphasis on the text on the word believe. Because I had fainted would have just beclouded that word. The, the stress would have been, I didn't faint. <laughs> but that's not the strength of the text. The strength of the text is, if I didn't have this belief, I didn't have this belief. Now, 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 this belief here is not is not this belief because I I felt like believing. It's in a tense that is causative, and a causative tense means something is causing me to believe. This is not something I volunteered. All right, something cause me to get where I am. I didn't get this belief on my own. It was not an intellectual discovery. It was not something that I latched onto and I just grabbed it. No, something set me up. <laughs> if I didn't have this set up, I couldn't believe. If, if I didn't have this kind of foundation, if something didn't bring me there, put me there, in the point where I had no other recourse but to believe. The evidence was too overwhelming. The experience was too strong. The voice was too loud. The instruction was too clear that I can't walk around and act like I don't know what to believe. Something caused me. Tell your neighbor, I'm here because something caused me. <laughs> Glory to my soul. I really didn't, really didn't want to get up this morning, but something caused me. <laughs> I, I, I would have given up last week, but something. Huh? He was made or caused to believe that he would see the goodness of the Lord. So David, we must have witnessed or experience something that caused him to believe in the midst of the horrors of war. In the midst of being a fugitive. In the midst of being separated from his wife. In the midst of Saul threatening him. In the midst of somebody like Nabal insulting him. All of that. In the midst of all of that. Being with the Philistines and then being kicked out by the Philistines. Wives and children stolen to be captives. In all of that, 
he believed. Something caused him to believe in the midst of it. This means that if he had not had some experience, tell your neighbor, if I hadn't had done some business with God, I wouldn't be here this morning if, if I didn't have a testimony. If I didn't have a testimony, I couldn't say hallelujah. Hey, God, if, if, if I didn't know him like I know him, if I didn't walk in a certain place, if I, I didn't have some kind of deliverance, I couldn't sit here and hold my head up, not in the midst of what I'm going through. I wouldn't have a reference point. Tell your neighbor, I have a reference point. Something, an experience, a memory, our instruction caused me to believe. It's a passionate recollection. It's something that prompted him. Had I not believed, had I not been caused to believe, I would not be where I am today. Had I not had the prompting of the Holy Spirit, if God didn't take me the way he took me, I couldn't handle what I'm into today. When, when, when I was going through that, I thought I was going to lose my mind. But it was to set me up for another day. Tell your neighbor I'm being set up. Being set up for another day. What could have caused him, nay, follow me, what could have caused him to believe? Past deliverances. Psalm 40 and 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me up out of a slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire, the NIV said. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. All right? So past deliverance. Tell your neighbor, past deliverance. Come on. Recall now. Pull up the file. Pull up the file. But you, you, know, you know that close call that you had? You know that near-death experience? You know that thing that could have caused you shame and disgrace? You know when you could have lost your mind? You saw your mind running down the street and the Holy Ghost brought it back. Oh, come on here. If it had not been, I waited patiently. And he delivered. That's why I'm holding on right now. Not only did past deliverance, but the promise of the Lord is another way that causes me to believe. Psalm 119 and 50, my comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. <laughs> uh, I got me a man after my own heart. Bring him. Bring that little boy out the field. And the oil was poured on him. So while he was going through, I know he remembered the dripping of the oil. <laughs> Come on, you shall be the king. That's why Abigail, Abigail met him in the way and said, you don't have to get your hand bloody over this fool neighbor. No, no, no. Your life is wrapped up in the bundle of life with Christ or with God. Ah, you're getting ready to be king. And when you get to your kingdom... Ah, remember me. Tell your neighbor the promise of the Lord is yea and amen. That's what's keeping you anchored right now. He cannot lie. Psalm 190 and 92. It says, if your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. <laughs> if your word didn't grab me. If your word didn't come and grab me, I would have perished. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Not only that, but other testimonies of how you can be caused to believe is the hope in the Lord. Your hope in the Lord prompts you to believe. Isaiah 40, 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Another thing that will cause you to believe is your memory. Yeah, the enemy doesn't want you to remember, but when you're going through, the Lord pops memories in. Some of you are remembering things this morning. That's why you got out of bed, because you remember, you remember. You couldn't give up, you remember. It causes you to go. And Jonah had that testimony, Jonah 2 and 7, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you. <laughs> 
Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Every now and then, something needs to jar your memory. So you could go another day. Jar your memory so you could hold on and not let go. Jar your memory because sometimes we get dull in the memory. Another thing that will cause us to believe and cause us to hold on is persistent prayer. Luke 18 and 1, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So there's several things that can cause you to believe one more day, one more hour through this little dark place because you've been here before. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Listen here now. Thy rod and thy staff, they com comfort me. Did he say evil? Did he say evil? He didn't say good time. He didn't say merry-go-round. Come on. He didn't say pie in the sky. He said evil. Walking. You ain't even running. Walking. Uh -huh. You can't even skip or hop through it. It's not a, it's not a, a, a quick process. It's a slow process. It's a step by step by step but I will fear no evil and you came through prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies anoint your head with oil how your cup go to running over something cause you not to leave God come on raise your hand right now something made you sing another song <laughs> Sir, something in your life when you remember caused you to say another hallelujah. Tears running down, but because you have experience with God, you're able to make it another day. The second thing, now that's the belief factor. Now, Deaconess Muriel, the sight factor. There's a sight. Believers will see. Tell your neighbor you will see. The devil is a liar. He makes you think that when you believe and you're waiting, you're not going to see anything. Isn't that the contention? Isn't that how he tortures us? Isn't that how he causes us to have sleepless nights? Isn't that why some of you stop praying? Isn't that why some of you won't show up for church? Because you didn't see nothing. You understand? And he tells you you're believing in vain. He tells you it's not going to happen. Look, you're getting old. You start, grow you start counting gray hairs up top, behind, whatever. You start looking at age. Huh? See wrinkles and you start getting nervous. When? When will it happen? When will it happen? When will it happen? Oh, come on. The enemy makes you think that you're believing in vain, but you're believing to see. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you're going to see, you're going to see. God is not a player. He's not playing your mind. He's not messing with your mind. He's too good a God to do that. He's too great a God to manipulate. He doesn't have to manipulate you. He just has to be God in you. He are believing, you're believing to see. So what's the side factor here? I'm believing to see. And the word to see literally means to experience. Not just to see physically. So, so this is in the infinitive. I'm believing too. <laughs> I love the infinitive because it tells you something going to happen. I'm believing too. I'm believing to see. I'm believing to experience. Not only physical, but also spiritual. It means I'm going to experience. Whatever it is I'm believing for, I'm going to experience. Somebody ought to praise him because you're in the infinitive. You get ready to experience. Even in the midst of war, get ready to experience. Oh, come on. Come on, David. Come on, David, you're getting ready to sit on the throne. Come on, David, but it doesn't look like it. Look at this man, Nabal, who is a fool. I'm protecting.
protecting him from all of the bandits. My men are roaming the hills of Judah trying to cover, cover his property and cover his land. And I just ask him for something to eat. And he insults me and curses me and rejects me. Oh, come on here. Look at what's happening. I don't see anything. And Abigail said, yes, you're going to see something. Because God has already chosen what you're going to see. What you're going to see is already wrapped up and tied up for you. So you're not believing. Saints are not believing and not getting ready to see. David said, I'm going to see something. And the word good here, we talked about it this morning. The goodness of God. The goodness of God literally means to be in harmony with. So that's what good here means. I'm beginning to see and experience my life being in harmony with God's divine purpose. Remember, good does not mean aesthetically good. We live in aesthetics. It smells good. You know, I, I, I was... I was away, and there's this, uh, you know, these, they have these little bar bathroom sprays. Thank God for them. These little, you know, bathroom sprays. Yeah, I like them. I like them. Mm. I love the minister, Dwayne. I love them. And, and some of them smell, you know, very, um, um, like you're in a hospital or something. But some of them have wonderful fragrance. And this one had a caramel smell. And I love caramel. Who did I spray? I hope they have. I hope they have some left. And so just, you understand? We we like to smell. Some of you have different smells. Some of you like lavender. Some of you like eucalyptus. Do you have your own smell? And it gives, it brings a certain kind of pleasantry. Okay? We like to look at pleasant, good-looking things or pretty things. I love flowers, you know? Pastor Robin loves plants. I love flowers. And so when I look at the flowers, it makes me feel what I call good. You understand? There are certain colors. They do a lot of things with colors and smell that when you put it on, you feel a certain way. You feel, you feel better. You feel good about yourself. Ladies, you know, you go and get your hair done. I mean, we used to, but you, know, you go and get your hair done or whatever you do with your hair and then you feel good about it. You feel good about it. You spray certain perfumes and you just feel, you know, nice and fresh and clean and whatever. And, and you see somebody that, you know, you have a certain perception of what a good looking person looks like because that's very subjective. You know, you, you think that person is good looking and, and, you know, I might think, well, yeah, well, whatever. And, and somebody else sees some. So, so we all have, we we all have de good definitions of what good is and it's usually surface it's usually surface but when God says good angel he's talking about what's eternal how is this going to fit into what I have for you and for everybody in the body of Christ for eternity so David you are going to see where you fit. <laughs> you, you, you're going to see, you're going to see how good I got this hooked up for you. You're going to see that you are not a misfit, that you're not going through this as a waste. It's all to fit you in. It's all, everything that's happening for you is to fit you in. Not fit you into family. Not fit you into ambition. Not fit you into what people think. Fit you in to my scheme, my kingdom, my design, my purpose. I'm, I'm, I'm shaving you down to fit you up. Uh, I'm taking you through to put you in your rightful place. That's the glory of God right there. And when you see it, it's going to blow your mind to see how God puts you in situations that you never thought you would be in. To see how God sets you up and you didn't even expect that would happen. You thought it was going to be this way because you're limited, you're finite. You're stuck on smelling good, feeling good, looking good when he is stuck on eternity. Lord have mercy. I'm going to see it. David said something is causing me not to give up. Things don't look good right now. It doesn't look 
good to live in a cave. It doesn't look good to have your life threatened. It doesn't look good for somebody to cuss you out. Oh, but the Lord held me together and caused me so I could see that a little shepherd boy could be a king. A little shepherd boy could have 600 men and more in his army. That little shepherd boy, my God, could sit on a throne. That little shepherd boy could have the prototype of what a kingdom should be like. Ah, that little shepherd boy that was in the backside of the field that nobody even thought about would emerge to be one of the greatest kings. That the little shepherd boy out of his lineage come the king of kings and the lord of lords. Tell your neighbor, you're going to live to see now. You, 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 you're you going to behold some things. If you'll just begin to fall back on who he is in your life. The goodness of the Lord is called the justice of God. Goodness means justice. The righteousness of God. He's not doing you bad. Stop it. He's not doing what? He's not doing you bad. It's his righteousness that's holding you back from making a fool, from keeping you from forfeiting what he has for you. He cornered you. Some of us feel cornered back against the wall. He's holding you back from messing up the goodness of God. Because your goodness and his goodness are in conflict. That's why sanctification has to kick in. Because what you call good what other people clap clap you about is not what impresses God you see that's the thing we want clap clap we want we want to be affirmed by a system that's in conflict with God's design come on David don't you mess it up you got Saul sitting right here he, he's sitting down using the bathroom He's incapacitated and he can't defend himself like he wants to. He's in the right place at the right time for you to do your thing and get what you deserve. Ah, to carve out your own destiny and set yourself up just right. Come on, David. Nobody will accuse you. You have a prophecy on top of your head. Aren't you promised to be the next king? All you got to do is get rid of Saul and you will be just justified go ahead and get him you got him go ahead and get him ah and he cut off a little piece of the garment ah and the goodness of God grab a hold to his heart say touch not the Lord's anointed and do my prophet no harm you don't have to make your way your way is already made come on and put your hands together I want to hear you come on I want to hear you praise him you way makers you way makers hear me this morning put the knife down stop cutting off people's garments stop trying to make your way stop trying to expose people so you you can set yourself up just do what God says for your way is already made ah, the goodness of the Lord it's like somebody who is always always exposing somebody so they could sound good always correcting people's speech so they could everybody could know that they're a grammarian you understand always pointing out somebody because they they do so well they do so well come on you don't have to do that if you're well you're well if you're great you're great david you don't have to you don't have to you just have to experience what god is getting ready to reveal to see here means to reveal i'm getting ready to reveal some things that were hidden you have to go through some experiences for you to see it. Last year you didn't see it because you were in your own revelation. <laughs> ah, my soul says yes. <laughs> you had your own, you had your own commentary on why this is going the way it should. Ah, but you're ready now. You're ready now. You're ready now. I set you up so you're ready to see why one door is closed and the timing of the closed doors and the opening of another. I feel a praise coming on. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to myself. Come on and put your hands together. Eee! 
<laughs> oh, you all ain't helping me. I think you ought to praise him right now. Come on, come on. For you murmurers and complainers and you angry birds, you angry birds, I rebuke the spirit of anger this morning. God said, if you believe, you will see. Put the knife down. Put it down. <laughs> You don't have to kill Saul to be king. You're already king. You're going to see the goodness of the Lord, the beauty of God. The beauty of God. Now, now the goodness of the Lord, and then I'm almost finished right here. See that? See that? Yeah, some of you are wondering. See, I'm almost finished. The goodness of the Lord. And the word Lord is Jehovah. I know we talk about Jehovah all the time. But I just like to talk about who is, who is he? Who is going to let him see? Who is going to deliver? And it's Jehovah. And the word Jehovah means to be. Simply mean I am who I am. And I, I'm sure you all know it already, but I just like saying it. I will be who I will be. You, 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 can't, you can't cage me or define me because I define myself. That's what it is. I'm infinite and original. I'm the uncaused God. You can't determine. I am who I am means nothing else defines me but me. You cannot define me. And even if you don't accept me, you still can't define me. So what, what, what he says, what he says and does is who he is. That's all it is. What I'm saying and what I'm doing define me. Okay? He's powerful. He's sovereign. He alone defines himself. He establishes truth and he works it out. He established the truth and then he works it out. He makes a promise and he works it out. So, so, so all, all David had to do was pull up the memory of what God has done. One little smooth stone, kill the giant. <laughs> you understand? I believe. All right? 600 men in the cave, all broke and busted, turned out to be a great army. I believe. <laughs> you understand? I'm the token of divine favor. I was on one side of the mountain, and, and Saul was on the other side, and he couldn't see me. I believe. <laughs> Well, you, 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 need to, you need to start putting down your little experiences here because some of you act like you haven't done business with God. You know when you saw death that came by your door and, and the devil said, I want this one. And the Lord said, not now. Just say, I believe. You got too much going for you for you not to understand that the same God that brought you this far is the same God that's going to take you uh, a little further. Come on. I came back to the camp and when I came back the Amalekites had taken all the women and children get ready to put them into captivity don't know what they're down there doing with them and when they got ready to stone me the God of heaven said dry your tears go after them you shall recover all I believe and when I got down to the camp of the Amalekites I was able to bring back all my daughters and all the wives and not one of them got compromised I got too much experience with God to give up now tell your neighbor I can't give up now I can't give up I'm gonna stop running I'm gonna stop running I'm gonna stop going off I got too much when I look back and see how the Lord broke the back of the enemy took me through difficult times when I I thought I was going to lose my mind and he steadied me all night long and when the morning came I was still in my right mind I believe he caused me to believe he gave me enough evidence to believe he showed up and showed out I got to believe so you got the believe you got the see now you got the reward factor there's a reward for believing, not only seeing, but there's a reward. You know, we, we seem to think that the Lord is abusive, like our parents. You know, many of us were raised in abusive homes. And parents 
can be very abusive because they feel like they have a right to be. You know what I'm saying? They brought you in the world so they think they can say anything and do anything and get away with it. But they don't know that God said, you only brought the child here, but the child belongs to me. And every abusive word, you're going to pay for it. Every abusive act, you're going to pay for it. Because I brought the child here for you to be a good steward. You understand? So if you don't repent and you don't get with me, you're not going to get away. There are consequences for messing with God's divine purpose. So what are you going to see? The goodness of the Lord when you get to heaven? No. A lot of scholars would like to make this heaven. This is not about heaven. David here was not thinking about heaven. He was thinking about the land of the living. <laughs> and for many of you, the devil tried to make you think, ain't nothing going to happen. Ain't nothing going to happen. You're going to die and nothing going to happen. He said, I should live and yet see and enjoy divine favor upon earth. Yes. Tell, tell your neighbor right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Tell your neighbor, I feel the season coming now. I feel God getting ready to manifest some things right here on earth. You don't have to cuss nobody out. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Keep your mouth shut. He's getting ready to do something. Keep your mouth out of the way. Go somewhere and sit down. You understand? So it's real. Even on earth, the believer has good hope. Tell your neighbor, I have good hope. I don't have no crazy hope. I got good hope. Uh, I got a portion. Uh, even in the trials, in the midst of the trials, I got good hope. In the midst of the trials, I'm still believing. Some days it gets weak. Some days I want to give it up. But before the end of the day, somebody calls and prays for me. Oh, come on. Somebody prayed for me yesterday and I thought I was going, listen to me. I was getting ready to lay down on the floor. You understand? That thing got up in my belly and I felt the strength of the Lord. Ah, somebody prayed for me, had me eh, on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed what did they do they stirred up the memory they stirred up the experience ah they let me remember that if it had not been for the lord on my side first timothy 4 and 8 the king james virgin said for bodily exercise profiteth little but goodliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Now and eternity. Mark 10, 29. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my sake and the gospel's. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers all the things that you think God took from you you're getting ready to get back sisters and mothers and children and land with persecution of course and in the world to come eternal life come on this is a promise of God you understand this is a promise of God it is not alone. It's not just that we are going to receive it in heaven and that we're not going to have death, but while we're living in the earth, there's nothing like believing and having eternal trust in the Lord. David said, unless, if I didn't have it, if I didn't have a record, Tell your neighbor, I keep a record. That's why you keep a journal. Every now and then you need to go back to your journal. That's why you write the date down next to the scripture. You understand? Pastor Diane, Numbers 23, 19, got all kinds of dates. I said, well, God, if you say it again, I won't have any room next to it to put because you done said it 20 times. See that? Uh, December 2013 and 
you know, July 2015, and you came back in 2016, and then you said, oh, you, oh, you did say it in 2009, 2009. L look, look at all these dates. Come, listen. There's a record. Tell your neighbor I have a record. Ah, oh, it's, it's, it's outstanding. Oh, God. It's overwhelming. And the enemy tried to make me think I don't have nothing. Yes, I have something. I have evidence and proof. I didn't get here on my own. The enemy had set a date for me not to be here, but I'm still standing. Abraham and Sarah. Come on. Come on, Abraham. Come on, Sarah. I said you were going to have a child. It's called the promised child. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. The promised child. <laughs> but it was getting... A little strange because at a certain age you shouldn't even think about having children you know what I'm saying um, you should just table it and so Abraham said sure you know my servant and Sarah said sure my bondwoman <laughs> ladies and gentlemen lay down your plans this morning Somebody's planning. Somebody is planning. You just can't wait. So you're, you're conjuring up. You're planning. You understand? That's why we still have the Gaza Strip being in trouble. And we got the Palestinians fighting against the Israeli fighting against the Arabs. For, because of this right here. You couldn't believe. Huh? God had caused him to believe. Get me an animal. Get me an animal. I'm finished right here. God, I thank you. Split the animal open because I want you to see something. And this is how we make covenants in the old economy. We sign contracts now with pen and paper, but in those days they did it with flesh and blood. Ah, somebody got to get cut. It was a it was a precursor to what was getting ready to happen on Calvary. Cut this animal open. My God. God and when you cut it open uh, usually two people walk through that means that if you don't keep this covenant may you be cut in pieces like this animal but Abraham you ain't got much strength I can't trust you you lie when you want to you give up when you do so I'm going to do it myself I'm going to walk through this animal myself and by two immutable things it was impossible for God to lie come on and put your hands together I got me a promise somebody help me right here you got a promise you got a promise that's why you're here God won't let you give up shepherd of my soul lion of the tribe of Judah holy one of Israel the righteous seed the soon coming king put your hands together and praise him this morning I'm not just hanging in there because I'm religious I'm not just hanging in there because I'm codependent and I'm too scared to step out on my own intuitiveness. I'm not, I'm not just making moves because I feel like I am blessed and highly favored. No, 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 no. I am doing what I'm doing because I believe. He has made himself so real to me in a personal relationship. That it prompts me not to do my own thing. <laughs> Help me right here. You need to praise him right here. I have options. But I choose him. I have opportunities. But I choose him. I have opinions. But I choose him. I have suggestions. Help me somebody. But I choose him. I have a different take on the subject but I choose him. Come on, put your hands together. I want to hear your praise if you're choosing him. Choose him. Come on, Esther. You actually, you're, you're a little um, deceived right now. You think that the blessings of the Lord is isolated and confined to your existence you think that you're here 
for the improvement of the quality of your life. You understand? You, you th and that's the way we think. I'm praying because God didn't intend me to live like this. It's not the will of God for me to go th through this. For me, I want you to hear me. It's the me factor. It's the me factor. So Esther was in her me factor. And she thought she was strategically set up in a palace from the hills. From, you know, they call them in Jamaica, country bunking. All the way from whatever, whatever. To be set up in a palace. You don't even know what oil to put on your skin. You, you didn't have nobody to brush your hair. You understand? You, 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 you didn't know colors. You, you didn't know palace manners. You, you, you knew none of that. And to come all the way and out of 127 women, you were chosen. Not because you were pretty, because all of them were pretty. Anybody up there, excuse me, up in there? <laughs> it was not the length of your hair. It was not the contour or the shape of your body. Ah, it was a greater purpose. Come on, greater purpose. That's why when our prayers are not being answered, they're too isolated. It's me. It's what I'm supposed to have. It's what's happening to me. It's what I didn't get, what I was supposed to get, where I was supposed to be. And that's why you were still miserable because we're praying amiss. It's Lord, according to your divine purpose. According to where you're taking me and everybody else. <laughs> oh, hey, according to what part I'm supposed to play. That's what I'm praying for. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Come on, Esther. There's a wake up call in here this morning. You're not here to be flattered. You're not here to be elevated. You're not here to be a personality. You're not queen of the day just to be queen. Just to have your own private armor bearer. Your own private person to come and cater to you. Your, your, your person who dresses you. You understand? They come and they choose your clothes and they tell you, no, you're living in fantasy. There's some real stuff going on in the heavens. There's something that God has put before the foundation of the world that he promised to preserve. Lord, have mercy. And you're privileged to be in the right place at the right time for a nation to be turned around. I hear the cries of my people. I hear the moans of my people. I see my people are getting ready to be attacked. And I need you to be in the right place. I set you up for my kingdom. This is not by accident. This is not to get your nails done or your feet done. This is not to make you look cute or special. This is not to put your name on the program, but it's to fulfill my divine purpose. So you always need somebody watching. And today we don't like that. We like to have our own experience and we like to be in our own spiritual space. And we don't want anybody to tell us what to do. But anybody who has done great things for the Lord always has somebody there. See? There's always somebody there to tell us. You see? We don't get to those places on our own. Our own individual revelation. You understand? So Mordecai, Mordecai knew the time he was living in. You need somebody around to tell you what time it is. <laughs> ah, while you're in your flattery, you need somebody to tell you, this is not the time for that. This ain't the time for that. And Mordecai said, listen, you, you, you know, we're getting ready to be annihilated as a nation. And that includes you. Uh, because you, you're a Jew too. You're not going to get by. You're not going to you you included in this. You're included in this. And you have access. I put you there for access. I'm talking to somebody. I set you up right next to the king for access. I gave you favor in strength.
strange places. Lord, you help me. I'm almost finished. Ah, I preach a sermon, an unavoidable assignment. You got to do it. You got to do this. It may not be comfortable, but you got to do it. It may seem like it's life threatening, but I didn't make a mistake when I brought you here. I didn't make a mistake when I saved your life. I didn't make a mistake when I kicked out Vashti to put you in the place because it wasn't about being queen what well, is about being a deliverer it was about opening up the way so that a nation can be preserved come on Esther come out of the cloud ah tell your neighbor come out the cloud come out the cloud ah you're too into yourself you think it's about you and your talent and your skill and your uniqueness and your anointing oh come on here and your gift it ain't about that it's about the kingdom the kingdom and you're not in the kingdom by yourself oh come on ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for God's divine purpose <laughs> Esther she got the memo and God is talking to somebody this morning and said you really didn't want to come to church and the enemy almost made you not even get on zoom you understand? But the Lord set you up to say that this is your time to rethink where you are and to acquiesce. It means to submit. Esther, think this thing through before God uses somebody else. feel a little help right there because you see it's going to happen I'm going to deliver my people with or without you I'm going to do this thing whether you're with me or not I'm just giving you a time a little play time I'm giving you time to come forth okay and when she finally got the memo you need to tell yourself, and somebody said, why you all always say that? Because that's how we talk to our people. That's how black charismatic people talk to their yeah. people, see? <laughs> I know it makes you all uncomfortable, but that's how we relate, <laughs> see? Because we connect like that. You understand? Get the memo, get the memo. Get the memo. What's the memo? Go see the king. Use your access. Use your opportunity. Use the position I gave you to bring about changes. Walk in the door, not on your behalf, but on a nation's behalf. You're taking a nation with you when you get in the door. <laughs> I feel a hollering coming on. I, I didn't put you here. For, for, to, 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 for aggrandizement. I didn't put you here for your name to be whatever. I put you here for the backstory. There's a backstory. <laughs> the backstory is my people are not going down. And you're going to help to bring them on. The Feast of Purim was just, was just celebrated. She went and she saw the king. As a result, the Lord made it so but I'm, I'm going to end with this i shared this with a few people in my little hebrew class whatever and it's powerful you see esther had no clue that she was finishing what saul didn't complete she had no clue that she was part of a great connection he forfeited it the spirit of the Lord is departed. And we know David played the part. But you see, Esther also finished. You see, Esther came, and Mordecai came from a Jewish background. And Haman, who was trying to kill up all the Jews, he was a Haman the Agite. And he came from the background of the Amalekites, you see. And because God never leaves a stone unturned. 
And because if he says something, he's going to bring it to pass, even if it takes years. He just wants you to be in the right place at the right time to unfold his commitment and his promise. You're part of the fulfillment of a word. He made a promise to the nation of Israel because they wouldn't let you pass through. I'm going to get rid of them. And Saul backed out and made it seem like God didn't say it. But here comes Esther. <laughs> I'm going to fix this thing. It's not going to ever go down that I lied to my people. And if I have to move some to make it happen, I will. Jesus. And the Bible said that Haman was again coming after the nation of Israel. And God is going to settle it. Say, so Haman, the Agite, met Mordecai, the Jew. And Esther had to facilitate the meeting. And God destroyed Haman and his whole family. Because Esther went to see the king. Now, what part are you playing to undo societal evil? <laughs> this, this is deep. Because some of you are engaged in big business and don't know it. <laughs> Some of your positions are set up to stop the onslaught of evil, but to also help facilitate the fulfillment of God's divine word to communities, to families, to people, to economy, to, to, to the church. And you're chucking and jiving and wrapped up in your own personal need. I got to have this. I'm going to have that. So-and-so got it and I didn't get it. When God has positioned you to stop the evil and to fulfill his word that he made to people in secret. Things are being set up for you to play your part. You're going to live to see. Believe to see the whole cup and the fulfillment of God's word in the land of the living. <laughs> He's given you enough evidence for you to live to see. He's given you, you you've been criticized for your, your position. And every morning you wake up, the devil reminds you that you're wasting your time. But he doesn't know that something is going to unfold that's going to blow your mind. You're going to see the goodness. You're going to see how much it had nothing to do with your everyday stuff. Nothing to do with what you thought was so important. Nothing you thought that, you know, you had to make somebody think, you know, I'm not stupid. I'm not, I'm not failing. I'm succeeding. I'm not, I'm not going down. I'm coming up. No, listen, it's greater than what the natural. You're asking natural people who are not even included to understand where you are. You're busy trying to explain yourself. You're busy demanding people not to look down on you and reject you because of where you think you are, when where you are is what God is going to use to blow everybody's mind. And you're stuck there. You ought to say to yourself, I've been in business with him. And I'm going to believe he would never drop me in a sinkhole. He would never leave me in a position that would cause me never to become what he wants me to become. He is working things out right now. Did David get to the throne? Yes. Did God bless his kingdom? Yes. Did God establish the hill of Zion? Yes. Out of David came the king of kings and the Lord of lords. If you are still stuck on just what you think you should have 
and don't see that goodness means there's something eternally working in my life that includes the body of Christ, that includes people I have not met yet. Just my position holds back evil from destroying my family. Talking to somebody. Just your obedience and walking with the Lord wards off sickness from coming after the next generation. Shift your position if you don't believe it. If I were you, I would stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Don't play with this now. Esther said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see the king. They are still celebrating the Feast of Purim. They just got through. A whole nation was saved because one woman realized she had to live to see. She had to believe. She had to believe in order to see the goodness of the Lord, the purpose of God in the land of the living. I'm talking to those of you on Zoom, you know, who are chucking and jiving. You chuck forward and you chuck backward. It's called a shuffle. You, you know how they call it the Pentecostal shuffle? You shuffling. It ain't no Pentecostal shuffle. You shuffling back and forth. You're in today and you're out tomorrow. As soon as you don't see anything, you back up. You have to believe in order to see. And your belief has to be based on who he is in your life. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe he's not there like he should be. So you don't have the strength to hang in there to see. And the seeing is bigger than a new job. It's bigger than paying off your bills. It's bigger, it's bigger than this. It's big enough to cover nations and people. It includes the release of God's righteousness in the land. Hey, my soul says yes. <laughs> Come on. Stand on your feet in the sanctuary. Raise your hand on Zoom. Wave your hand on social media. Put up those hands in the little box that you all got shut down. Because you all ain't dressed. Huh? So says yes. Yee! Man and so. Come on, come on. It's a morning of surrender. Hey, ma. Glory, 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 glory. It's worship time, you all. It's praying time. It's worship time. Glory to God. Glory to God. I believe that the Lord is talking to someone who were, who, were, who were seeing and going through difficulties. But because of how God has caused you to believe and to trust in him, because he has proven himself, he has carried you, he has held you, he has delivered you in so many ways, he has provided for you. It caused you to hold on to see his purpose, his righteousness, his justice in the land of the living, which includes more than you. So if that's you, so busy, you know, the things that we need, he said, seek ye first and I add those. You are functioning on the fringe benefits instead of holding on to the main thing. Well, if, if, I, if I don't get this and that, if I don't get that, and if, no, no. The Lord is talking to you. And for those of you on site, come and step right up in here. You know, that's why we're back in here. 
we have the privilege of coming and stand in this holy little place right here. Come and stand up if God is talking to you this morning. And don't wait, don't wait, because you know, come stand up here, dear, I'm also told, say, shepherd of my soul. Mm. If you come and come like you got some sense, come, come. Mm. Yeah, come on. You can spread across here. Don't be backing up, backing up there like you're scared to come to the front. Walk up like you got some sense. Come stand over here, son. Stand, brother Corey. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, with your hands. Thank you, Father. Come on and raise those hands. Those of you over in Zoom, raise those hands. I want to see those hands up. I can see, you know, I can see. Put the little thing up in the box. Put those hands up in the box so I could see. You understand? Because the Lord is saying, I've given you enough evidence of my love. I've, I've proven that I want you. I've proven that I called you. I've proven that I saved you. I kept you. I kept you. I kept you from the devil making a fool out of you. I've covered you in the darkest hour. I didn't do all of that for you to question. Question whether I'm going to fulfill my promise. My promise is yay, which means yes. Amen, which means so the atabanso. Come up shy to the answer. Come on. This is a moment. This is a moment of reality. Hey, Jesus, I'm not here by chance. I'm not here by accident. I'm not here out of form or fashion. I'm not raising my hand because it's Sunday and I'm here and I want to raise my hand. I'm here because it's a time that you're asking me in the midst of my turmoil, in the midst of my disappointment, in the midst of things not working out the way I want to. You have caused me to still believe that you're going to work in my life and that I'm going to see in the land of the living, not just about my life that's why i didn't see nothing yet because it's been about me that's why i didn't see nothing yet because it's been about me but now it's about a greater cause oh higher come on shepherd eater come on eat and that soul it's about it's about your purpose it's about your people it's about your people it's about your people now come on it's about what you've given me to move in the kingdom of god it's about the things you have blessed me to do my 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 my, my, uh, my blessings and and, and my talents is not about me. It was about me. But today it's about you. Now come on and praise him in the soul. Shepherd of the East to tie. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Come on. I don't hear you. I don't see you. I don't see you. Come on. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, give him glory, give him glory. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Spirit of fear. I rebuke fear. Yeah. Put that thing on your face. Thank you, Lord. Nothing is impossible. Don't you beg him anymore. I'm coming to your house. I'll make a house visit. I told you to wait. You want to rush me. Holy Ghost say, wait. No, 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 no. So, yeah, come on, come on. Here it is. I chose you. You didn't want me, but I chose you. And because I chose you, I will not let you go. Come on. Come on now, Uh huh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up to us. Yeah. Come on. Up to us. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank
Chains be broken. Thank you. Thank you. Change. Thank you. Thank you. Generational change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Generational change. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let me ask. Thank you for the light. Thank you for the light, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me this way. Yeah, I'm a master. I said, you heard me. And the Lord said, the time is now. The shift is a holy ghost. Come on, get that ticket. Did you sit there? There was a host. You had the ear of the king. Come on. Speak for me. Yes. Speak for me. I have packages for you. No, 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 no,
Come on and worship. Give myself away. Come on. Come on. Come on and give yourself away. And for those of you who are out there, I stretch my hands towards you. And I command that the Spirit of the Lord stir you again. And open up your appetite. And give you a new desire to see beyond yourself. To see beyond your desperation. And to know that He wants you to see more than what you think you're seeing. Hey, raise your hand. Spirit of the Lord is in the house. Spirit of the Lord is in the house. Come on. You didn't make it on your own. You made it because God gave you reason to believe. He gives us reason to believe. Hey, God, I thank you. Come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand and worship the Lord. He's concerned about you and your household. But it's more than just you and your household. He's concerned about everything you're connected to. The person on the job. Your neighbor. The person that's on the way to meet you. In the business transaction. You don't know where God is going to set you up. Set you up to be a light. So... All you've got to do is surrender. Glory to God. Give myself away. So God can use me. Give myself away. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Come on. I give myself away so you myself away I give myself away so you can use me here I am here I stand Lord my to God. Um, Reverend Trish, before I hand over the mic, just lay hands on Elijah for me, please. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord said, give yourself away. Oh, you got, you got yourself on a certain path. It's not a horrible path, but it's a controlled path. The Lord said, I should be able to do anything I want with you anytime I get ready. Come on up, Inamana. Hey, oh, oh, you hear him calling. You hear him calling. You hear him calling. You riba robo. Ribi ribi robo. Sush. Come on, go on down in the man's side. Uh -huh. Come on down. So I feel a praise up in here now. Shepherd of my soul. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Sata. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For those of you out there on social media, the Lord is doing things in your life so that you will know. You will be convinced, persuaded in order to believe, to see. I'm talking to somebody, your granddaughter, I see her walking the street. She's homeless. I'm talking to somebody. 
You haven't seen, you all haven't seen her in months. And the Lord said, she come in home. Hey, my nana. Mm -mm. I'm talking to somebody. She was actually living out of garbage cans. Young woman, bright young woman, was in college. But the enemy messed with her. The Lord said, your prayers answered. Live to see. You better praise him wherever you are right now. Hey, uh, oh, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Glory. Mm -mm. Thank you, Father. Go in peace and go with the word of the Lord and the kiss of God on your life. And knowing that you are not serving him in vain. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. Though the pathway may, with, to glory may sometimes be drear. But you'll be happy each step of the way. The Lord bless you.